uh, as the tour was winding up, you know, I said to him one time, uh, I'm really looking forward to get back and sleep, sleeping in my own house, you know. And he looked at me like, what? You know, <laughs> like it's such a thing that never occurred to him, you know, I, really. And I, I, I think that's that's who he was, you know, and maybe still is a guy with, you know, his real home was being on the road with a band and, and performing. When I'd first done the tour, came on the tour, Bob came up and said, I'm really glad you're here, which made me feel good. And then um, he and I, after the bus arrived in Fort Worth, he and I went to sit in, a, in the restaurant. He said, let's go have coffee. So we went up to the restaurant and just sat there talking. And that was the day that I, I, I was most, I learned something about him that I thought was pretty incredible, which that he was facing the door to the restaurant. My back was turned and we must have been there for an hour talking. And at the, at the end of the conversation when we were getting ready to leave, I turned around and half of the tour was sitting in tables behind us, but he never once, he, his eyes never left me to indicate that he saw somebody coming in. And I just thought that was pretty cool because that's not easy to do. He and my daughter get along because the both of them are both, they're just ridiculous together. Like she's like uncle Bob, you know, like, like I know grown women that would, that would kill their own relatives just to be in a room with a guy. And my, when my kid shows up, she's like, Oh, hi, Bob. Like, they're always very honest with each other. And they would always talk about their little talks. One time, I'll tell you this one funny story about him <clears throat> in the Warfield Theater. It was 95. And I brought uh, my family with, uh, and Marcella, my daughter, loves Bob, just has a great time with, with, with her. And uh, so we're getting ready to do the show. I'm getting my clothes on or whatever. And I notice I see my daughter. I mean, I see my wife in the green room, and I don't see my daughter. And I said, there was Marcella. And she looks at me like the color drains from her face. It's like, isn't she with you? I'm like, no. And at one point, I go into a panic. I actually lock myself up to the venue on Market Street without my lamb in it. And I'm trying to explain to security who won't let me in that I'm the drummer in the band. And at one point, one of our guys sees me. And I said, man, I'm looking for my kid. Have you seen her? And they're like, they're like no, man. We'll help you look. And so everybody helped look. So at one point, I looked everywhere except his dressing room. So I go up and knock on the door real quick, you know, and his assistant opens it or whatever, and there she is. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like five minutes late going on, you know, and the two of them are holding the show up. I said, babe, come on, we got to go. Uh, Bob's got to go to work now. She says, oh, okay. He, he, and he says, uh, yeah, uh, I want to talk a little more about that later, okay? And she's like, okay, Bob, you know, and she grabs her drink and comes out and meets my wife. And so at one point, I go to stand with the band and wait for him. And they they put they bring the house lights down, and he stops me with his arm and he says, uh, uh, "Hey, uh, we got to do something about that girl." And I said, "Oh man, I'm sorry. She just loves you. I, I didn't want her to get like and disturb your show thing or whatever." He goes, "No, no, 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 no. That that girl in art class, yeah, uh, she's real mean. We got to do something about her." The story goes. We had gotten Marcella these cowboy boots, and there was this mean little girl in her art class who, who didn't do her stop. She, she didn't like her cowboy She was being mean to her anyway. She splashed paint on them, and Bob said to her, hey, how would you get that paint on your cowboy boots? <laughs> like, I'm looking for my, my daughter, and she's telling that story while I'm looking for the kid, hold, and they're holding the shell up. And he stops me and says, uh, yeah, uh, we got to do something with that girl. I used to be a sailor. And when I would go to a new port, I would do this back when I was a teenage sailor. I, when I'd get into a port, I'd go walking around all night just to check out the town. And apparently Dylan was a guy who liked to do this too. Let's see, we had done the TV show. And then later that night, everybody else retired to the rooms. And I went out walking. As I'm, as I'm leaving the lobby of the hotel, I see Dylan sitting there in the lobby. He says, where are you going? I said, I like to, and I told him, I like to go out and take walks late at night and look at stuff. He said, oh, I'd like to do that too. So we, so we started walking around the town together. And we subsequently ended up doing that on the road on many occasions. It was a great, great way to wind down. Yeah, when you got, still got a lot of energy and it's 3 a.m. I remember going out to Sydney Harbor 
with Bob. We went. In, uh, somebody had the Spirit of Sydney. I think it was a sailboat or racing. We went out and uh, we anchored off a little like a sandspur island, you know, just a, you know, a nothing. And I remember thinking I'm going to go in and take a swim. So I jumped over the side. The next thing I knew, Bob jumped over the side, and we both just took off swimming. And we swam for the island, and we made it to the island. And there was a rope on a tree. You know, I, remember, I think I said something like, you want to climb the rope? I will if you will. You know, And I think the people from the boat said, like, you want us to come and get you? And I said, Bob, you want to swim back? I will if you will. You know, that's Bob. I mean, to me, that's, that's my takeaway. That's, that's sort of like everybody probably has a Bob Dylan. Everybody knows a Bob, right? Everybody thinks they know Bob Dylan. I think I know my version of what Bob, that, but I think the I will if you will kind of says it all to me. That's the experience I had with him on stage. And I, I think I said that to him musically every chance I could. Like, we gonna do this? I love you well. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the poet of the rock and roll, the voice of the promise of the 60s counterculture, the guy who first folk into bed with rock, who donned to make him in the 70s and disappeared into a haze of substance abuse, who emerged to find Jesus, who was written off as a has-been by the end of the 80s and who suddenly shifted gears, releasing some of the strongest music of his career beginning in the late 90s. Columbia recording artist, Bob Dylan.